Hello, uh, Friday, Friday. Let's get down. It is Friday, Friday. Um, it's a tribute to Rebecca Black, of course. This is your Rebecca Black live stream. Um, fantastic. It's nearly the weekend. Um, hopefully, the weather's a bit better where uh, you are because here in Edinburgh today it is absolutely bucketing it down. Um, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be talking about how to build high conversion websites. What do we know about that? We know a lot. Uh, so, we have a web development team at Explosion Ninja uh, who do fantastic things when it comes to building websites that are optimized for SEO, but also highly optimized for high conversion. So um, we're going to be joined today by Joe Barlow, who's a, a website development project manager, who you may have seen in a previous stream. He's going to be taking us through uh, the process that we use. So you can go home and either rebuild your own website, or if you're in the middle of a rebuild or considering redesign or anything to do with um, increasing your conversion for your website, this is a stream for you. Um, but first off, I'd love to know where are you watching from today? Do tell me, um, and you can also tell me how bad the weather is where you are as well. So where are you watching me from today? Uh, whilst you are telling me that, uh, just a reminder that, yes, uh, we're going to be doing the um, free book giveaway uh, so you can get a copy of How to Get to the Top of Google. Let's move that more to the middle. How to Get to the Top of Google are giving, going to be giving a copy away um, at the end of the stream. All you have to do is use the hashtag ask or ask, depending on which part of the country you live in, um, and I will do a prize draw at the very end of the stream and pick someone for the comments. So if you do have a comment, sorry, a, a question for Joe about uh, website optimization or anything that's spoken about today, make sure you use the hashtag ask and I'll pick you out. If you don't want to use it, uh, that's fine. Just ask your question anyway, but the questions will be handled at the very end of the stream. So wherever we've got people uh, um, joining from today, uh, Tony, hey, hello, happy Friday. Um, I'll be ready to go. Hi, Lee. Um, got uh, Wales, a fantastic part of the world. Um, haven't been in such a long time. Uh, we've also got uh italy always a fan of saying hi to italia um hello from serbia uh kayla hello to you uh, we've got brighton uk uh we've got some of our best ninjas uh, living and working out of brighton including our um head of content marketing and um general manager or chief operating officer uh columbia fantastic oh lovely deepesh hello great to see you uh, as always um chase hello good morning Kenno, hello netherlands terrific i'd love to take a trip to Neve uh, the netherlands right now uh fantastic so yeah again don't forget use the hashtag ask and i'll do a prize draw at the very end of the stream for this copy of how to get to the top of google um but yeah i'm not doing this on my own today i'm going to be joined by joe barlow joe how are you doing today I'm great, thank you. How are you? Good Friday, getting ready for the weekend. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I am getting ready for the weekend. What's, what have we got planned? Um, avoid the rain. Uh, that's pretty much it. What about yourself? Might be on my agenda too. Unfortunately, the dogs will require me to go out in the mm. rain at some point. So absolutely. other than that, hibernating, I think. Log fire. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I think we're just going to spend the next three to six months just hibernating in our houses. Um, happy Friday, indeed. Houston, Texas, great to see you. Uh, Norway from the train, fantastic, fascinating. Uh, we've got hello from India as well. Hello. Um, cool. So, um, Joe, what are you going to be talking about today? So, kind of going through our process on building high converting websites, I suppose we're often really well known for the SEO side of it and how we factor that into it but we also fundamentally build very high converting websites and some of the things that we do to make sure we deliver that essentially. Um, and it kind of goes from the ground up. Um, so looking for different things and then at the end, giving you a top 10 checklist that of things to kind of look out for or think about including some a little bit more involved, some less involved that you can do straight after this. Super, super. So let's get straight into things. Uh, so here we go. Uh, how to build a conversion optimized website live with Joe Barlow from the website development team here at Explosion Ninja. Uh, so we get straight into the action. Uh, first of all, uh, just a reminder, questions at the end. If you have questions, I'll try and pick them up. But because of the flow of things, it's, you know, if you if you drop a question in now, it might not get noticed or seen until the very end. Um, but if you are going to ask a question, use the hashtag ask uh, and we will enter you for the price draw for a copy of How to Get to the Top of Google. Uh, <clears throat> fantastic. So um, our website development team, uh, Joe, maybe you want to tell us a little about, a bit about yeah. who that is and who it comprises? So it's kind of split into three parts, I would say, broadly speaking. We have the head of the department, Vic, who's, who's amazing. 
offers us all guidance and advice. And then down under that, we have three main sections. So we have a website hosting and maintenance. So that's headed up by our tech lead, Jenny. And what she does is maintain the sites that we host. That can be ones that we've built or ones that come to us for hosting. We have our own dedicated server and we also use WP Engine. And that also includes doing plugin updates and maintaining sites. Super important, and I'll touch base on that later. But um, definitely one that I would say is really something that you need to um, concentrate on if you're going to um, keep a healthy site moving forward. Uh, great. Uh, so we're going to go through the steps now of how you actually build a process. I know you uh, built these out. So the first step, what is that? Uh, so first step, research phase is is the big one, really. So the research phase consists primarily of um, research, both um, intrinsically within the business, I suppose, like what you want to see, what you will work for you. So from kind of a back end perspective, but then also the wider aspect of research in the market your audience and your users essentially so that's the first one so Super. really um quick um the first one is understanding what you're trying to achieve so this kind of links back to i think andre spoke about this previously when to rebuild or when not to rebuild and really <laughs> what you're trying to achieve from it if you're starting a fresh and have no site then rebuild um, <laughs> or fix. But it, it, it does it, it influences it quite a lot um whether it's a whole site overhaul or a page overhaul look at that when you're starting what really you're hoping to achieve from this site whether that's internally with integrations to make it easier it doesn't always have to be front end but i would say that primarily a lot of the time it will be front end um and then this really links massively onto what success looks like this isn't going to be a turn it on and you'll get this. But what in a year or six months after the site's live does success look like? And in a micro and macro way. So talking about um, age experience and interaction, but also conversion. So have a few different goals there of what success would look like. Um, this one's really good. I, I think a lot of people overlook this. We do this as part of our build. We have a kickstart questionnaire where we ask you loads of questions and it sometimes seems a bit like, oh, this is a lot. But actually, it's to get a really deep understanding of our clients and their customer. So asking plenty of questions of what they want to see, what they would like to see, what functionality they would see um, and why they like other sites. I would say other sites that are maybe competitors, but definitely more holistically as well because there are going to be a lot of themes that translate onto your site as well. Um, so when we've done that and we've gone over it and we have all this incredible depth of knowledge, we hand over to a dedicated project manager. And hmm. that would be someone like myself or Emily Cullinan, who you just saw in the chat say hi. She's another hey. dedicated project manager and she does incredible bespoke builds, lead gen builds that will blow your mind and convert like you've never seen before. So yeah, that's that's really the research phase. But spend time here um, and, and really understand it and make sure you're asking those questions because sometimes if you're not asking the right questions of who is our audience, understanding who that audience is, when you maybe get to a little bit later in the design phase, you may be designing to the wrong audience or mm. designing to the wrong devices so it's really worth spending that little bit of time here so looking at ga can help you with this speaking internally and externally what, what's ga sorry ga google analytics so yeah it's really worth having a look at that for the device split if you have a pre-existing site and going over that and just making sure that sometimes your expectations and what the reality is is sometimes a little bit different so mm. just just conferring those, I would say, and making sure that you're not assuming too much and you are definitely on the right path. 
Super, super. Um, we're going to get to uh, one part of that you just covered about design in just a second, but uh, somebody asked a question which we don't have to save into the end, which is, uh, is this going to be saved on YouTube as a video? Absolutely. So uh, all of our live streams become a uh, replay video afterwards. So if you check back in about an hour or so, you should see it. Otherwise, if you go to ExposureNinja.com and look for uh, join the dojo, the, um, uh, it's basically our mailing list, uh, I'll send out a... Um, a link to the video afterwards as well in the next like, couple of hours. So yeah, join join newsletter, you'll get notified about all of our videos and our future live streams as well. Um, but yeah, you were just covering uh, design. So um, I know that's one one uh, topic that a lot of people are going to be interested in. We will talk about a little bit more. But I know one tool that um, we use internally that I, I know our designers certainly rave about is uh, Figma. Perhaps you can uh, explain a little bit about what Figma is and how we, we use it. So Figma is a design tool. So essentially, often within design, we work to like a two, two three-step process, essentially. So the first stage will be wireframing, which is balsamic. Um, it's really a top-down flow of the page. So it's not fancy. You can do a lot of things with it, but it's really just to illustrate the way a page flows. Figma is like the next level of that and is kind of how, as close to how the build's going to look. And we have a team of great designers here who do awesome work and they will essentially visualize it in a static way and show you the flow through the site. Um, and then that can be used by developers to build from. There are some programs around that mm. will export it and import it to your CMS. That's cool. That, there's mixed on whether they will be really great because you may need the HTML structure or not, but mm -hmm. it's definitely worth something to have a look at if you're interested in it. Um, so they're, they're fairly user friendly. It provides them in free format. So you have like the CSS and all that kind of stuff in there. Great. Really, really great. And a real wow factor I've found for clients, like when they see this, they're, they're often like blown away at seeing the, how their new site's going to look and new site's mm -hmm. going to um yeah it gives a kind of like tangibleness of like i can actually see how it is before it's completed and you know i mean the design phase is never fast because there's a lot of considerations you have to make um but it's certainly faster than building an entire website out yeah <laughs> and then and having a chance to play around with that yeah exactly and the other great thing about it as is <laughs> it's kind of um it's real time as well so it has a speech bubble icon and you can click on it in the top left and then anywhere on the design and leave feedback into that bit and that's really useful for making sure that you know things aren't lost in translation or making sure that we're we're getting every little bit right because you know mm. we're experts at building sites but often you know you're experts in your business so there might be an image that you want to change or something it's really useful for nailing those little little details down before you go to build and it saves you a lot of time in the long run Mm -hmm. Fantastic. We're going to move on to the next step of our of our process. Uh, but before we do, if you are new here, you haven't watched our streams before, uh, do make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're watching this on uh, YouTube. Uh, hit follow or like if you're uh, watching this via Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, all those kind of places. Why well. it's really appreciated. And uh, yeah, just hit like, like, like because it helps us to know whether you're enjoying this stream or not. Uh, so the next phase of the process is uh, the foundation phase. Um, what's that made up of? So in some ways, it's similar to um, the research phase, but it's kind of fundamentally different in laying the foundations for it. So there will be research within it, like keyword research. So this is where we'll map out all your pages, build the site structure with you, and get the right keywords for those pages. So we have a team of great SEO ninjas who will trawl through loads of data to find the best options. This isn't always going to be the most competitive keyword or the most visual keyword, but it will be the one that's the most likely for you to maybe achieve or going to give the biggest impact in the long run. So sometimes these will be a mix of both like really competitive ones and less competitive ones to try and build that reputation moving forward. So big part, we'll discuss that with you and go over it with you. And, you know, we, we come up with a really great plan to lay the foundations for solid SEO growth. And this is where we build it with the SEO foundation. Um, and that links in with the site structure. So making sure we've got those top level category pages, those smaller category pages, location pages is a big one that we try and get in there for building out localized intent, search intent. And then we cap that off 
by making sure that we're looking at your competitors as well. Because sometimes they will have a great idea and sometimes they won't have a great idea. So, you know, it's really about just making sure we're not missing anything, but we're also not including anything that we don't believe will work or is as effective as other opportunities that we may have. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, uh, being an SEO myself, I'm uh, obviously uh, really keen on making sure there is that SEO uh, foundation there. Uh, plus also, you know, it kind of uh, um, shores you up for good rankings down the line as well. But that site structure part is obviously massively important. You wouldn't start building a house without a blueprint. So you really do have to map things out well um, before you get started. And sometimes, you know, I've seen sites come to us looking for a free marketing review and uh for feedback on the website if you oh by the way if you haven't requested one yet go to explosioninja.com forward slash review and you can get a free review of your website and marketing completely free uh it takes a couple of days for it to come through but you get a 15 minute video um of recommendations of how to improve your marketing so do go and do that um but when we do get some of those websites where they haven't really put a lot of thought into um where the pages go on the website and stuff like that, it, it it's really kind of obvious why that website's not ranking because it's out of order there's no like filing system like that page should go in that directory folder you know you you, know, you wouldn't do a filing cabinet with no segmentation so in the same way you shouldn't create pages or blog posts without segmentation as well um extra level of targeting as well so often one of the things you'll find is people will have like maybe a product page or a category page and it will have like everything listed on it and it's then mm. going to be really hard to rank for those individual terms and not only for that from a user perspective it's going to be really convoluted as well so a prime example of this is people who have like 10 craft categories on a top level category page if they aren't individual someone's going to scroll all the way through to that bottom one to find it and it i would argue it doesn't matter how great your content is they're not likely to get that far. So having that site structure with a, a great menu and a great navigation that someone can get to them straight away will help users get to the page that you want. So that's why foundation sometimes takes a little bit of time, but it, it's really important because without it, you, you've not got the blueprint to success. Yeah. Absolutely. And on that point of knowing how much of your content that people are, are looking at, how much they're reading, that's something that I know the, the web development team and our conversion rate optimization team are able to track. And that I've, that's kind of involved in our review process post launch, which is actually going to be something I know you're planning on covering at the very end of uh, towards the end of the stream. So if you're curious how we do that, stick around. You're going to find out very uh, shortly. Uh, to uh, the person who asked how you can uh, get uh, a free marketing review down there, there's a, a link explosionninja.com as well as up there in that opposite corner just go to that web that address and you just have to fill out a form very simple and you get yourself a uh, marketing review sent over fantastic so the next part is uh, the design phase we briefly mentioned about figma what's 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 the next kind of part of step three what's the how is that broken down so we have internally both wordpress and shopify that we build in um custom themes that we've developed so they are kind of layouts or sites that are kind of semi set up and have great flow through them tried and tested we know that they convert and we can then look at going through these custom themes and tweaking them to your business um that's maybe for something that's more of a, a lead gen, a template, or from something that's um, of that ilk. When we move away from that and we get into something like a bespoke build, we may be using these, but we're then going into wireframing and we're doing it all from scratch and it will be completely bespoke and custom to the user. This may also include like custom integrations or things like that in the design phase because they need to be factored in quite early, especially mm. if that's gonna add additional functionality. So an example of this would be Shopify, um, where we, we were asked to do a lookbook and have something in there that is um, allowing the consumer to go through the looks and feel and see the different outfits and match them, um, which was a great idea, but it had to be factored in at the kind of early stage to make sure it's in the right place for navigation and presents that right ROI. Sometimes if you just tap these things on at the end, they're not going to be too integrated, essentially. Um, 
Go on. <laughs> so, um, so then after the wireframes, it's a really kind of iterative process. We will chat with our clients, go through it, have lots of conversations, tweak them. So this is the really top down layout of how it would look and we would present it. The yellow post-it notes are annotations. So it's a little bit more clear what that means to our clients. Once we're happy with that and we've got the feedback and we've got it where we want, then we essentially look at moving into the, the design phase. So we use Balsamic for this. Um, some of these can be super quick. Like it is a layout. You can make it a lot more visual. It depends how complex you want or need this wireframe bit to be. And that really varies on what you're trying to achieve. So sometimes a simple layout with the blocks will suffice. Sometimes we need to be a little bit more specific so we can visualize and communicate what the design is going to look like and how it's going to function. I mentioned before about Figma and how that looks, and I've actually got a screenshot uh, that I've included here from where we were going through our own website uh, development and design earlier in the year or the tail end of last year. Um, or maybe it was even last year. My goodness, where has the time gone? Um, but yeah, this is this is pretty much how it, how it was looking before. Uh, let's see if I can just. Oh, that's messy. Let's do it like this. Um, yeah, this is. Oh my goodness, banners everywhere. Let's get rid of some of these banners so you can see what's going on. Uh, that that. There we go. Cool. So uh, at the background, you can see that this is Figma. It's basically how it's been designed. Similar as like to Photoshop and how you can just you know design how a website will look in the end, but with the. It, there's so much more like fine tuning you can do and it's real time as uh, joe has mentioned earlier you can do things whilst on the phone to your client or or whoever the lead is at that at that business and make you know changes directly on the fly and get a positive or negative um decision on whether you go forward with whatever it is that you're looking at so a landing page or a full website design stuff like that and then the right hand right hand side is actually the real time preview so the let uh, the, the image in the background and the kind of like developed wireframes and then the smaller image on the right hand side there is when you hit preview you can see how the page would look in a full screen and think right actually this looks really good um i wish i could actually show you how it works directly because it's super super fun uh but that would complicate matters somewhat and uh, we've actually got a website that we've um got as an example um joe that has been built with Bals um you know designed in balsamic taken into figma and developed with the client and then publish um this perhaps you'd like to tell everyone what this website is and how we came to build it so um it was a really great project um emily headed it up it's for black history walks it was a really collaborative one to kind of um help build out their offering and get more walks and tours around london um it's it's a really educational kind of charity piece and they found it to be massively um, beneficial now to convert a lot higher they've coming back for work and we're we're looking at how we can expand this. So it's really great. What you'll see at the top here is essentially the design is slightly different than you would see it. Um, usually the banner is split in half. You've got a great image. You've got a really clear navigation at the top. Um, I know that a couple of people have asked about navigation and how we map it. So I'll touch base on that at the end. Um, and then the other things that you've got really here is the really clear CTAs on there as well. So it's really easy for any user to get on this to navigate through, but it's also really in keeping with their branding as well. So we've kept to the color scheme to help with brand resonance really, and just help highlight the key areas to the different users. So this was, you know, how we got to this bit using Balsamic and Figma to get in. Absolutely. So uh, the next part you, I, I know you wanted to cover was, um, uh ux perhaps you can explain to people what ux actually stands for so ux user experience um a bit of a broad term i think um so you have to factor in a lot of elements for this and different people's user experience depending on what they're trying to do will be different on a site so that's why this is split actually into two sections so you've got lead gen and then we've got e-commerce as well because the focus is always going to be on getting someone to take an action. But with e-commerce, fundamentally, it, it, you know, I'd suggest that it will primarily be very product focused. So mm -hmm. it's going to be much more around that. Whereas lead gen, slightly different. Definitely, you're trying to get leads in. But how those lead look may be different. So um, 
big part on this is calls to action. So making sure you've got clear and robust CTAs throughout. So making sure that it's clear what the offer is, what the lure is, what the user's going to get from it, um, and why they should pick that, and what to expect when they've picked it. This is often a big barrier we see when we do like secondary research or research in general about like user experience. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you click it? And it it sometimes comes down to well, I didn't know what was going to happen, so I didn't I didn't want to ask for that call back. So I didn't know when they were going to call me. I didn't know what the call entailed. And it's not always about giving, you know, a really huge answer, but even just, you know, we'll contact you within 48 hours to book your appointment or, or just really clear, succinct instructions so someone knows what to expect. And that that transparency helps to build trust as well. You know, trust signals can also be reviews, FIFO, Google, testimonials, mm -hmm. absolutely, and accreditations. But it can also be transparency and honesty and coherency. So um, definitely focus on that. High quality images, and this is one throughout, like a number one for me. You can you you can have the best site, but if you don't have high quality imagery, it's going to really really hinder how people look at it. So one of the big things I would say from this is, you know, there is a huge, huge thing on atmospheric cues on a site, essentially. And that can do with um, kind of the content, the design and navigation. And this can massively Im impact on shopping enjoyment, essentially. Um, and, and really impact on impulsiveness. So for... Mm -hmm. Users who don't have any experience of you or have little knowledge of you, making sure that all these atmospheric cues look great and the imagery used is high quality is going to kind of unconsciously show and demonstrate that you're high quality as well. It's a, a much more effective way of communicating quickly imagery and color and layout than content because someone's going to actively read that. So definitely high quality imagery i'm not saying it can't be shutter stock it can't be stock we use it there's some great examples out there and other commercial um, imagery but that one's a big one for me it it will put you off and it has put me off time and time again yeah um, it's it's tricky with stock image imagery because um like people are becoming more uh, akin to like recognizing when it is like they can just there's like a, a, a sixth sense for it that you can just kind of tell um but yeah if you do your de detective work you can find some some good stuff it just comes down to trying to avoid using the same thing everybody else has used i mean like you if you rely upon like free stock imagery websites and i can think of several uh like uh, um is it unsplash or upsplash and uh, pexels and stuff like that they're great websites but then you see like 25 other SaaS companies all using the exact same image. And it's just, it makes you look less credible because you, you've not put the, um, the effort into creating your own imagery there. Um, but yeah, if you do your detective work, you can find some good stuff. Yeah. Um, it's relevant as well, I suppose. Is mm. the other one. Um, and if you're going to take the imagery and spend the money to get imagery, spend once and spend right. Don't, you know, look yeah. at their portfolios, look at examples they've done. Don't necessarily just go for the option that's either the cheapest or the most available because these images may potentially need to last you a long time and you might mm -hmm. even use them in other contexts. So they can really be worth their weight in gold. So, yeah, definitely that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the uh, uh, spend once and spend well. Um uh, e ethos or whatever the word is, uh, especially when it comes to digital marketing companies. Um, you know, you can spend cheaply on cheap SEO or cheap website development or cheap social media uh, marketing, but you get cheap results. Uh, that's the only unfortunate thing. And if you are looking for a high quality, uh, aff affordable digital marketing agency, then just go to ExposureNinja.com and you can request their free marketing review. And we'll have a review of your website and tell you exactly what we'd like to do to improve your uh, traffic, your leads, your sales. And uh, we'll send that back to you in a, a short video explaining exactly how we'll do it. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you hit like down below because I only see uh, 20 likes and there are 30 people watching. So 
there are 10 of you who haven't hit like yet. So please just scroll down, hit like. It costs you nothing. And if you're not happy at the end of the stream, unlike it, and I shall refund you the money. Uh, fantastic. So uh, some of the things not to forget when doing lead generation sites. Um, USP bar. Um, it can move, be really effective. There are times, you know, sometimes that it may not be there or you might be developing it still, which we've definitely mm. done, um, you know, but something to really bear in mind, they're often quite easy to install or implement and they can have quite a good visual impact above the fold. Live chat is an interesting... Before, before you do dive into live chat, sorry, I know this question is probably going to come up and I, uh, I'm going to ask it to you now. What's a USP bar? Oh, so unique selling point. <laughs> Sorry, uh, acronym. Um, <laughs> and what, what would count as a unique selling point? So sometimes they won't necessarily have to be completely different to every other competitor, but it's highlighting something that you believe gives you a good value proposition. So this might be, you know, free delivery or for us would be free website review. Um, can put trust signals in there like Google reviews, turnaround mm. time, um, awards, accreditations just things to really highlight the best parts about your company um, and often these are done with icons and really visually and tend to be above the fold either mm -hmm. just under the menu under the header and I think we'll see a couple of examples of those later and then there's another one where it's just below the hero image which is the main image above the fold yeah so yeah definitely Super. those cool so live chat Live chat, we use talk a lot and it's great. It's a great free tool. It's really easy to implement um, and it offers some great functionality for an additional cost if you want to explore those. Um, you can set it either to be so it needs to like react or you can have it so it's more static, but it offers a really instantaneous feel to a user and it helps cut down that feeling of not being able to communicate with someone. So I would say that it's it's definitely something we advise to include. Some clients don't like it, um, but we've seen a good uptake with it for, for some users and some clients just definitely. Um, specifically things like dental practices and things like that where we've installed, it's had a really good response. Um, so yeah, definitely think about that. Um, it, it's a yeah. really great way of appearing online. Yeah, I would just uh, say on on the website builds or the the client campaigns where they don't like it. That's typically because it just doesn't match the type of client that they have. That they uh, may not just respond to live chat. So I mean, obviously, you just need to use the right tools for the right target audience. So you know, if, if it doesn't work for your website, it might just be that your target audience just isn't interested in live chat. That can come to different de de uh, demographics, like some people. Uh, just don't want to have to talk through live chat in the same way that like millennials don't like to be on the phone. I hate being on the phone. I'd much rather have a live chat. So yeah, just keep that in mind when considering if you're going to have a live chat or not. Uh, and then click to call. I'm very, very mindful that we're half an hour in and uh, we've still got about 75% of these slides to get through. Oh, well, I'll wrap it up. I like to talk, especially when I'm back. <laughs> me, too, live, me too. Live chat. Um, yeah, so we've done that one. It's worth testing, though, because it's free. So that's a quick one for anyone. Absolutely. It's all, um, so a little bit of code. It tends to be for the details that are just at the top of the page in the right-hand corner, which might be your email address or your number. Make it so it's clicked to call. Um, essentially, this just means that someone can click it on a mobile and it'll call you straight away without having to type the number because yeah it's amazing how many websites don't have that functionality oh, yeah. just on a tool yeah and, and it's it's very easy to set up as well i would argue that most people if you google it around or look for a couple of guides on youtube you'll be able to do it super simply um yeah absolutely so it's great yeah great little one and can increase conversions literally overnight um so great lead generation here. We've got videos, which is really great. It's a really visual way of kind of representing information and good for engagement. You've got brilliant bits about the CTA. So in the top, we've got the contact button slightly because they have a couple of different methods. And then there's a login portal as well. At the top, you've got a really clear navigation. And then we go into kind of really segmented CTAs. So what the real focus of that is, the core intent of the page, the digital risk protection, and then you've got the on-demand webinars, and then a little bit more about Scurio as well as a business. So um, clear, succinct, and really friendly for mobile, which is a big was a big thing. Yeah, it's a must. Yeah.
Cool. So the UX for e-commerce then changes a little bit. So similar to Lee Jen in a lot of way, you need to focus on the shop now and the product. Be super, super clear on what you're selling above the fold. And this, I, I do see it time and time again that people put things and I'm like, I don't know what you're selling, especially if you sell more than one product. So people who sell multiple, they're not gonna they're not gonna go through to find it. They're not gonna search and search and search when there's probably a competitor that they know of that they can literally type in and just buy it straight away. Ecom is so competitive that layout, cues and precise information and really great imagery is is a must. It is yeah, absolutely it make a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. Succinct and visual, as always. Um, keep it short, keep it sweet, especially above the fold. If you want to have more information about product descriptions and information, do it after the product and after someone can purchase. It will help rank him, but it also means it's there for the user who wants it and not taking up valuable real estate. Prioritize top selling products and collections. Top selling products doesn't necessarily just mean volume it may mean ones that have the highest average order value. So the ones that are the biggest impact for your business, prioritize those. So having banners on them, that we put these in as standard in Shopify. So it shows you exactly which products other people have bought, which are the matching products, and then collections. So making sure that people can upsell themselves if they want to. So this might be like, you know, this product is with. So currently working on a really great client that sells them. Um, brilliant like cheeses and crackers and at the moment it says pair this with this so they click on it and it literally says there pair this cheese with this cracker pair this cheese with this jam upsell super simple and it would get me every time solid trusted. it's absolutely amazing how many websites miss out on on uh you know pair this with this or upsells in the checkout process or in the basket it's it's amazing i can't yeah. believe how few few websites do and it will make a big difference um you know Every order, add, you know, having five pound or every 10 orders having, it, it will make a difference. It will accumulate for you. And often they're very, very quick to install. So we build them a standard. Trust signals, again, product reviews. I would suggest on this, you want to have product reviews as specific to the product as you can. But obviously for a new site or big sites with lots of products not always possible but just make sure you're featuring some product reviews that are relevant maybe the same type or for the brand as a whole to help build trust so yeah uh, a few more elements to consider as well that i know you uh want to yeah. mention. uh uniform high quality imagery i keep touching back to this for product ones especially be clear on what a user's getting um uh, make sure that it's really specific and not convoluted so a nice playing background high quality imagery and i will be honest i've seen people do really great jobs on their own of this so with a really simple background good quality camera and they've taken it themselves so yes you can pay and get this done really really well but there are probably ways to do this and get better imagery if it's out of focus or really bad quality quickly so something to bear in mind but i would suggest try to keep it uniform Optimized basket design, so really quick to buy, quick to purchase, quick payment gateways. So PayPal is a great one for trusts. It's quick, it's easy, and often very secure. Then you've got other ones that are really coming into fashion now. Klarna, Clearpay, brilliant. And they, for bigger ticket items, or ones where it's a bit more impulsive, can be huge. So I know that, like, for me, I work um, here and I, I, I do a lot of gaming and hobby. This has been a big one for a couple of websites that I know, and they now use ClearPay, and it definitely allows people to buy recent releases straight away, offsetting the cost. And it is one that I know has got some of my friends and other people. So something to consider if they're bigger ticket items, sometimes spread the cost can be a really good way to get into a different audience or an audience who's maybe a little bit more hesitant. Um, add click to buy straight to cart for the person who knows. Don't don't make them have to go to three different pages. Let them just buy it. You'll see yeah. it a lot on Amazon and places like that. And there's a reason they use it because it stops that click funnel. Yeah, especially when it's something that people come back to reorder. If they, I mean, obviously we advocate for um, 
uh, subscribe, subscribe and save if you can add that functionality where people can save money by subscribing at monthly delivery super. But there are some websites where that might not be set up yet. And a fast, very quick thing to turn around is just to add, click to buy. But people who just want to come back and go, all right, I want to buy that chocolate bar again because I know it's great. I could just do it and go through that process super quick. So, yeah, very simple change that you can make. And um, uh, I know you wanted to uh, briefly look at this website, which was an e-commerce store as well, but they also have like a lead generation element to them as well. Yeah, so really interesting, real, really complex as well with lots of different variables to the products of different materials, different sizes, different dimensions. So this was achieved on WooCommerce. So you can get really, really incredible levels of variation on that. Um, but they also do bespoke. So this shows you that kind of hybrid of the lead generation for something that is needed so they can speak directly but they also have the e-commerce functionality for something that still like was super bespoke you know this mm -hmm. size this size this wood this material but you could still achieve that without speaking to anyone and, and it was really really great um, and really useful for the clients and the users as well really simplified it so yeah this is that one super uh so um yeah Obviously, making it uh, mobile friendly is super important, and it's in, uh, important because Google doesn't just want it; it Google needs to have uh, mobile friendly websites. I know that this is something that we've uh, wireframed um, and done Figma Figma designs for, uh, even for one of our uh, recently uh, shortlisted uh, campaigns for the UK Search Awards. So, uh, for um, takeaway packaging is uh, one of the. Uh, um, one of our clients that we've entered the UK search awards, we've been shortlisted for that. Really happy for the team and everyone that's been involved with that. Uh, and this is pretty much how that, that mobile design phase looks. Um, yep. So simply it was just to get the products much more centric, make it much more updated branding um, and make it more coherent. So it follows a lot of the same similarities as the desktop page, but there are some subtle differences in how things will function. So that's making it responsive for mobile. But these elements were slightly differently designed to make it much, much more usable. So you can see it clearly. You've got the products really in focus on the home page so people can get to the category they want. Great trust pilot, USP bar that scrolls through. So another example of that, one hour delivery drop. Boom. That shows you exactly what they're doing straight away. And then you've got the great, great CTAs up there, online shop and custard branding products. This is something they wanted to push. So we put that in and it helps improve conversions. Great search functionality because a lot of their users used it because they knew what they wanted so they could get to it really quickly. And that's why that's super prominent for this design. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Uh, so next up is uh, QA and user testing. So um, we do have a multi-step approval. Uh, and how's that work, Joe? So yeah, QA is, I think, something that's very challenging for businesses and agencies. It requires time. And how we approach that there is to get multiple people to do it. And in some ways, that's because more eyes are actually better than one. Sometimes the developer will QA the build at the start. And they will potentially miss things because they're so familiar with it or they don't see the little things. So then we'll get the project manager to QA it, who oversees the product and the developers, maybe flag some more things and tweak those. The QA, we have a special QA ninja who literally that is their role to do it. We'll bring out really um, key things that will come up for maybe the crawl or Google. So making sure that we've got all the redirects, making sure that we've got all the meta, all those kind of key foundation bits on it and also from a design aspect as well. And then big final sign off from Victoria, the head of web dev. Um, and then essentially once it's ready to go, the client signs it off as well. And then we look to go live. So a lot awesome. of steps in it and it can take a little bit of time. Um, you won't get everything, you know, a uh, site's always changing, always growing, but we aim to get as much as we can in the pre-live. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's really important to do all of that kind of so up to this point, we've gone through several steps, we've gone through seven steps. And those include an awful lot of um, research at the earliest stages, a lot of um, detail uh, orientated work in terms of like how we get this website doing really, really well long term. And a lot of work towards the end with the build, a lot of work put into uh, quality um, assessing and just make sure that everything works as intended. And there's a lot of post-launch stuff as well that's also incredibly important. Um, I know you want to cover the essentials of that as well. 
Yep. So big fan of this. Um, this really goes back to, you know, when these all feed back into each other, you know, you're looking now at the research phase and what success looks like. How do you quantify that success now? It's live. Making sure that you've got all the bits in place, like your sitemap redirect for the SEO health tracking. So you know how many traffic you're getting, how many users, the conversion, making sure that the apps, the plugins are all working and make sure that they're all up to date. Add some heat mapping, pop jar. Make sure you know how users are using it. You know, everything's based on data and best practice. But the one thing that you can't do on a new site until it's been live for a bit is see how users are using it. And this will link into the next part, really, which is, you know, making the amendments and making the site grow with you as a business. And that's something that we really focus on here is post-launch performance. And that's Crow making tweaks, adding what's, bits. What's Crow? So conversion rate optimization. Sorry, I was so bad. <laughs> I'll, 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 it's uh, okay. It's okay. Um, so like tweaking in on that and making sure that, you know, we might see that a user's not going as far down and actually that CTA is quite important to that page. So what we'll do is maybe lift it up. And this is a really iterative process and can be done through the heat map and the data in Google Analytics. Or we might also do this through split testing, which is in the top right, which is Google Optimize. And that might be for this the example one. we've got there with... Um, Tim and the yellow button with refresh, uh, request a free review, we could test that and have a different copy in there. So it might be get your free review now and see if they, they make a difference. Um, run the test for as long to get good data um, and then make an informed decision moving forward. The tests, as I spoke about before, aren't always going to be better, but they might tell you what doesn't work as well. So it, it's worth it for the, the quality of data that you get essentially. Absolutely. And one thing to, to keep in mind with uh, like Google Optimize, fantastic tool. It's free. Uh, the URL is there. Um, you can just t uh, type in Google Optimize and you'll be able to go and find that uh, with a Z, not the less. But Google being smart will tell you exactly where uh, where it is anyway. Um, you don't need lots and lots and lots of traffic to do tests, but you do. if you do have a smaller amount of traffic, it's going to take you longer to do. So when you are doing tests, whether that's a change to a design or change to a CTA, stuff like that, if you don't have a high volume of traffic, just throw some PPC at it and just get that traffic in quickly because the sooner you get like a 1,000 users plus or 10,000 or whatever the volume you need is, you can make a very quick decision on whether you make that change. Because if you have to wait a month to get a thousand people through to your website, that's a 30 days of a low converting website. So the sooner you get users in and make that change, the better. Um, the next uh, tool, so what, not sorry, next tool, but one of the tools you mentioned there was a uh, hot jar. Um, so on the left hand side here, so up here, this is. Um, Basically, it gives you a heat map of where people are clicking. And as you can see here, the majority of people are clicking on um, the call to action. We're on our homepage, which is request a marketing review. A lot of people are clicking this uh, down arrow, which just takes you further down the page, which is quite interesting. But you've got people clicking on our trust signal as well. So there's Google, um, uh, Google ratings there. People are clicking on it. They want to know, are they authentic? Um, you know what are people saying about us and so on and then the uh the part on the right here is a heap uh, um a scroll map which basically tells you how much of the page people are looking at and which is something that joe referenced earlier so all that red area that's where people are seeing that's what people are seeing when they're loading on the website and then the yellow basically goes from red to blue like blue being cold um the by the yellow stage people aren't seeing that so i can tell you that by the green bit uh just here you can see that um, 62 I think it's 62 people or 52 percent 62 percent or 52 percent of the people aren't making it past that point so less than half of the traffic coming to our homepage doesn't see the rest of the content on that page if you apply that to your website it means that a lot of the content you might have on your homepage is just not being seen at all so always keep that in mind you're above the fold content basically what people see when they load on the page is the most important copy and call to action you have anywhere on any page so if you're not sure if people are interacting with your website properly, if they're seeing all of the content, install Hotjar. It, I think there's a free account, but you, the, the, the paid account obviously gives you more options. So that's one way you can do it. Now, uh, we're going on to the top 10 checklist because 
we've got nine minutes left uh, to cover these and I wanted to squeeze in some Q&A at the end there as well. So uh, number one on our checklist, uh, Joe, tell us. Rapid fire checklist, top 10 coming now. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Clear, clear and succinct. Find out how AB can help you. Brilliant. Get in touch now. Makes it quick, easy. They know the call to action. So make sure you've got one. Make sure that it's effective. If you don't know if it's effective, try split testing. Um, some different variants. That That's the number one. <laughs> if you don't have it, users aren't going to be able to convert. So regardless of what the call to action is, make sure you have one and test some if you don't think it's working as effectively for you. Make sure it's above the fold. As we've just shown the previous slide, 62% of people don't get below the fold or just below it. So if we only had our CTA there, that would mean 32% of our users might have the ability to convert, but 68 of them then don't. So make sure, um, yeah, definitely. Um, the service pages are slightly different, but you know people will look at the content there, especially if it's more specialist, Tony. But um, it's still really important to have a CTA on every page um, yeah. because they might just be looking to see if you offer that and making sure it's at the top. So um, just just bear that in mind. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the home pages, people are normally going to navigate to the menu anyway because they're looking for a specific page. Whereas with a service page, their intent is a little bit different. They're a little bit deeper into your sales funnel or your their, their journey through your website. So they're more likely to because they've gone to like an SEO services page in our, in our case, they already, they know they want to learn more. They're already going to do that by scrolling further down the page. Whereas if people land on that page, the intent is a little bit different because they don't know if they necessarily found the right page for them. So if, if homepage to service page traffic act in a different way to um, Google search to service page traffic. Um, but if you're not sure, there's all these different tools you can use or you can request an uh, Exposure Ninja free marketing review by going to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. Um, next up on the list is a sticky menu, uh, which I couldn't fit into the slide. So here's one instead. Well, so it's super <laughs> simple, but it really helps. It scrolls the menu with you and that that's it. It means that you scroll down the page and you don't have to scroll back to the top. And for a user who doesn't know what they're trying to find or is scrolling to... Like you say, go through the service page and, oh, no, actually, that's not the specialist service I need. They haven't now got to scroll all the way back up to the top to get to your menu again. They can go, oh, no, let's try this service page. Shorten the sales clicks. Shorten the time that they've got to play about on your page to find it. Lessen the drop-off rate. Really quick. Absolutely. Super quick. Yeah. We'll always, always have it. Um, unless there was a really specific reason why you didn't need it. And I've not really come across one yet. So the only one that I know of is on our own website where we disabled sticky menu because we realized that um, we wanted basically the content on the page to be the entire thing that people focused on because we wanted to, people to be able to just in, uh, dive in and kind of fall into reading that content. So we wanting to remove the menu as a distraction. But again, that comes down to doing your research and knowing that that's what our target audience needs. Whereas when you're doing a B2B or like a service or like a website like this, a sticky menu makes way more sense or is like, you know, because people are just arriving, maybe they're still getting to know your company. Whereas in our case, it's a little bit different. Um, the next bit was a USP bar. Again, couldn't fit it on. So I got an example from Foot Asylum, which has been, I don't know, it's always my number one go-to because it's really easy to see. So um, it's, it's simple what it says. It shows you the discount. So people who come on the page and are looking for discount can see it straight away. And it shows you it's free UK delivery and what price that's at. So it's, it's really just to highlight that for the user who comes onto the home page. And actually, you know, a couple of these would make me stay on the page. You know, I buy a lot of trainers. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I buy in a pair of like Jordans and having to pay eight quid postage when I've just spent hundred odd on a pair of trainers wow. has has made the difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely like and that's petty, but it has. Um because I just think no, it's totally good. Um ten percent discount off, great for students. Definitely looked at it when I was doing my MSc in undergrad. Um uni days, most students will have it and it will give them a list. But really good to make it prominent. NHS one or ones for teachers can be really useful as well. So Ones like that, just to get a different audience group in, 
may be a big difference to you from them going to a competitor who doesn't potentially offer it. Absolutely. So great examples. And yeah. really and there's another example coming later on with the website, um, uh, the takeaway packaging, I believe, have a USP bar, which you mentioned. You can have a USP bar that's underneath the menu that's sticky, or you can have one that's underneath your uh, above the fold section. So we'll get on to that in just a second. I've got that uh, screenshot for you all to see. Uh, the next part will be contact details. So you mentioned before about making sure it's easy to find and get in touch. Yeah. yeah. Make it prominent, make it easy to find so you've got a really great cta there so get my offer that was really quick and prominent for them call us free so they know it's free some of their competitors they were premium or paid so it was worth putting that in um lowered the objection made it easier and that's really functional for mobile then you've got the trust pilot it's visual and it's super there and you've got a benefits bar above that as well so yeah really hard to miss a bit hard to miss yeah Social icons, social proof, yeah, definitely allows them to click through. Really great for kind of visual brands or e-commerce. One thing I would say, don't put social icons on there that you don't have social accounts for. Yeah, yeah. Definitely seen it. <laughs> Just list the ones that you use um, so, and make sure that the links work, number one, but really, really should have them on there. Especially for mobile, often people will validate your brand by going on your social. Um, Absolutely. We like that a lot. High quality imagery. I keep coming back to this. There are different ways about it. Um, just to quickly get in on Dev and Pig, yes, you can do that and alter the Canva images um, or the Shutterstock, but you need to make sure that the license fits for it and it allows it to do that. So just be aware of that and do a little bit of research first. But I have, have seen examples and people having done it just depends on the license and contract you have with those images. Um, yeah. So, yeah, number seven, trust signals. Another way to build trust signals. I know that someone asked about this conversion signals and adding a good guarantee. Um, Rafi, for her, Rafi. Yes, definitely. If a guarantee is a really good thing for you and you offer like two, three years on a product, really worth putting in. You could put that in the USP bar there. So, you know, three year guarantee on all products or that kind of thing. Really great. Shows that could be a key difference between you and a competitor. Um, and I definitely factor in warranties than other businesses. John Lewis, not that much more expensive for electronics. And they used to give you a two year warranty, always went with them because it was an extra 12 months. Mm -hmm. So things like that can be massive. And that, that's yeah, a real yeah. life example of decisions that people will make based on having that extra level of security with your product. And it shows that you've committed to them as well. So it can be a really great thing to do. Reviews, testimonials, and live chat. You will need some of these. I'm not saying you have to have all three of them in, you know, above the fold, but have some form of these reviews and testimonials above the fold. So you will need to have a Google review icon or some form of trust signal above there with your reviews. Testimonials running through the page, especially for lead gen, product reviews for e-commerce. Live chat, if it's appropriate for you. Sometimes it can make... Um, the desktop too busy if you have other types of live chat function so just specify and test if it's working for you it might not as your business but it's a really quick free one to test if you haven't got testimonials or reviews start and pick one platform and go for that one thing that we see is people trying to get 10 different platforms so if you have a hundred customers who are going to leave you a review and you do it over 10 platforms, you're only ever going to get 10 on each. If you do it on one platform and prioritize one platform, <laughs> you'll have a much greater debt and a much greater trust signal than something that has 10 reviews. So that's one thing I would say. Whether that's Google review, I think they're brilliant and the stuff you can do with them is fantastic and visual. Trustpilot is another one and FIFO, but sometimes to get the widgets and the things that look really swanky, you have to pay a little bit more. So just bear that in yeah. mind for a younger business. Definitely yeah. something I would say. Absolutely. Almost there. Yeah, I love it. Um, concise, user-friendly copy. So quick, short, to the point. <laughs> Essentially all it is. And this needs to be underpinned for your SEO. It can be tricky to do. Um, if you think or wonder whether you're doing it or whether your keywords match your content, free website review, and we'll tell you. We'll tell you how that works and whether that's going to be doing it. And that is something you definitely need and is one of the trickiest things to do. 
um, content for SEO and content for conversion and making sure that it's good in mobile and desktop. So visual graphics and step one, twos and threes can be really great for showing that journey. Yeah, absolutely. It's super important to break up your copy. You can't just have like a massive block of text. People rarely read it. Only like certain demographics of people or or cohorts or sections of people will read like a big long bit of text. It's better to break it up. Like one thing I'd always try and do is like um, turn a piece of like a long couple of paragraphs into just like 10 bullet points and then see how I can turn those 10 bullet points uh into just three bullet points or how can i can just con condense my my content down and try and get each of those bullet points to be fewer than 10 words there's like loads of little tricks you can do to do that but if you're not sure just you know get in touch with us we can help out as best we can number 10 before we get into a few examples from our, our most recent well our build from the last 12 months uh, is our security done as part of our go live um by the great team that we have jenny making sure that we have ssls Going further, as you have the site, this is making sure that all your plugins are kept up to date and your site's up to date. Minimizes cybersecurity risk, minimizes um, you know problems that you can have with updates, problems that you can have with conflicts. So definitely one that people need to consider and one that we often don't see people doing. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to race through a couple of examples so we can just squeeze in some questions at the end there. At the end here, in fact, it's already at the end. Uh, so the, this is uh, Chaz, as a company we've been working with, I believe, 12 months or 18 months, somewhere between that period of time, um, who actually we've been shortlisted for another award at the UK Search Awards of 2021. Um, it's a fantastic campaign. I'm really uh, proud of the team for the build for this. Um, Joe, I believe you're involved in this campaign as well. Yep. Yeah been involved with it quite a lot and my colleague lee um really great visual keeping in time with the, the branding you've got a great cta and form there really quick for the different types of user client contractor really great trust signals at the top with fifo quick links to get it super quick and then partnering with and there's some big brand names there so definitely works definitely help you don't have to be a big brand names but you know for your industry names they might be they might be worth it and it definitely shows trust in your business, even if not. So, yeah, you'll see all the elements there. Uh, Shopify, free postage and packaging over £10 on all UK orders. It was a new site for them. Um, great, clear, succinct, really helped improve conversion rate. You've got the online gifts with the overall shop. And then we're straight into the R products. They didn't have many reviews because it was coming over from an old Wix site. So we're starting to correlate them and you'll see them a little bit further down the page. But we're already pushing in the post launch and I keep in touch with them through the PPC campaign to start getting these reviews on the home page a little bit higher up and also on the product reviews. So you'll see that there. Um, really sleek design and conversion rate has been great. Um, brilliant. Again, request a free demo is a really, really great way uh getting someone involved and in you know interacting with your product the cloud booking case studies is a good way of trust signals it's a different way than google reviews but it shows businesses and brands they've worked with and can be really really useful in demonstrating that in-depth um way that your business works so specifically for b2b this can be really valuable in almost a white papery context sometimes so that can be another one as a trust signal if you've published anything like that. Um, yeah. One well, thing I like about this website is uh, the, the the use of two calls to action. Uh, so the request a demo and a COVID solutions. Like um, obviously, it, it this um, you can do it in different ways. It doesn't really matter what kind of industry you're in, but you can have like what I call a hot lead call to action and a cold lead call to action. So the request a demo is somebody who's like, right, I've made a decision. I'm going to try these these uh, um, this team out. Uh, COVID solutions is your cold um, lead solution where somebody's not really sure what they need need yet or what their options are when it comes to um, in this case um, desk booking in the office space what am I supposed to do with COVID and all the uh, requirements there or oh, I have a COVID solutions I'll click on that and you know it takes me through to I don't know downloadable uh, white paper training guide whatever is that suits your business but you know somebody who's ready to convert give them something somebody who's far from converting give them something to uh, convert with as well there's uh, apex bridging um, so this again just talks about like how important the call to action above the fold is. Great call to action, really quick get started now, adds that urgency and quickness so they know when it's going to happen. 
brilliant kind of USP usage, we find like they're with a great offer of what they're offering. So it's really quick and it isolates the user's interest straight away. At the top, all click to call, all clickable. So you've got really quick contact and then you've got a guide as well function there. So uh, lots of different elements, but really easy navigation, which is something we spoke about. And you've got yes. lots of different ways to rank as well there. So if you look at the bridging loans, BNB expert, these are all individual specific services that they can rank for and offer their expertise in. And then a great testimonials page. Absolutely. And then uh, once again, we've got takeaway packaging. There's so much that there's, you know, to love about this, uh, about this site. And uh, again, this has been shortlisted for a UK search award for you know, design campaign uh, results. So yeah, really happy with that. And then, of course, uh, our own website uh, has a pretty good demonstration of strong call to action, good copy, uh, trust signals with the Google uh, rating as well. There's live chat in there, which is me. <laughs> uh, that's actually not talk to, which is the one that we recommend a lot. There's actually one called collect dot chat, uh, which has a lot of automation in it. So if you're not available, you can direct people to different parts of your website. Um, so you can set you. Know, you can say to, in our instance, if you go to our website now, you'll see me asking uh, whether you want our free marketing review or if you're looking for our training guide or if you're looking for our videos, if you're looking for uh, services. And again, it's all automated so people can find their way through the website um, really easily without you having to be on there 24 um, seven. So that's the last website we're going to be looking at. And now we're going to handle questions and answers. Joe, uh, it's almost 10 past. So you, do you have uh, a few minutes to answer some questions? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. super, super. So I'm going to just uh, keep that there. Um, do that whilst we answer some questions. Uh, if you want to win a copy of this book, How to Get to the Top of Google, use the hashtag ask. Otherwise, um, yeah, ask away your questions. There are a few that were uh, earlier on in the chat. See if I can find them out. Um, I've already answered this one. Uh, okay, so Deepesh, does a switch from the CMS make a big difference to website performance? Um, as in like a switch from big commerce to Shopify, uh, do those templates have a big impact? What do you think, Joe? Can do, yeah, definitely. It really <coughs> depends on why you wanted to do it. And this goes back to the foundation stage, so the, well, the research stage, what you're hoping to achieve by um, replatforming, essentially. Uh, definitely doing some bits on it. Um, upcoming it's definitely a big hot topic with Shopify 2.0 and we're building some great sites in that um, and we're definitely replatforming some people ourselves now but whether or not that Shopify or potentially even WordPress would you know WooCommerce has an amazing level of functionality and flexibility that I would say sometimes Shopify doesn't have the product variations are much more so it's really down to what you're wanting to achieve and why um, performance wise in terms of website performance depends what you mean in terms of that if you mean conversions and traffic potentially if the theme's better and better laid out you could improve that and better seo opportunities if you mean because it's going to be quicker or the server's going to be better depends really because shopify is a hosted solution so it's harder to improve that but potentially if you went to wordpress and woocom and you put it on wp engine which is a dedicated wordpress server you could maybe improve that even more. But it's quite a technical thing. What I would say, if it's something you're considering, my email's there, please drop me an email and I'll happily go through it with you and see if there's anything that we can offer um, advice on that. Your email was there, but I turned it off because uh, I couldn't see us both. Let me put those back on. There we go. Uh, they should be back now. Um, so um, question, uh, this, this I guess I can answer this. So what would you say is the best free SEO software? Um, there are very few that are actually good that are free. I mean, like nothing really good is free. Otherwise, you know, maybe it'll we'll be driving Lamborghinis, uh, you know. Um, but you can try SE Ranking, which is uh, the tool that we use within uh, Exposure Ninja uh, by going to bestninjatool.com and you can have a play with that for I think 28 days or 21 days. Um, but enough enough time for you to get a lot of the keyword research or competitive research you wanted to do done. Uh, so you can find a link to that in the description underneath here um, if you're watching us on YouTube. And if you're not watching us on YouTube, just click on over and you should be able to uh, see uh, that in the description. Tony's asking, when you say map it out for ranking or for SEO, what does that actually mean? And uh, what is a good content layout for SEO? So this really goes down to navigation, the site structure. So 
homepage about us, services clearly laid out. So for example, you know, if I use EN as an example, we wouldn't put services and then have everything on the one page. So we have individual pages for our different offerings like EPC, SEO, website development. It does help for impact on SEO because we can prove our authority there and give great information and great content to our users. But it also allows a user a much quicker way to get there. So that's what I mean. It's individual to a business, but it's about um, segmenting it down so it's usable, but not going so far that it becomes unruly because the more pages you have, the more pages you have to maintain and keep up to date. Um, and you need to be able to write enough on it that it's worth it. So for example, if you were doing hearing aids, it may be worth having it by brand or by hearing aid type, which is what we've done in the past, but having it by hearing aid parts would probably be a section too far because the segmentation and the, um, volume of traffic that you're going to get to those pages and the ranking opportunity is probably quite minimal for the ROI and the time that would be needed to write it. The content would probably be very technical if you were to build a page. And if not, then it would probably be so top level it wouldn't really offer any value. So it's just that that mid ground is what I would say of what's usable and functional to your user and what's going to help you rank. Um, so that's what I mean by site navigation and SEO. It's a really tricky one at the moment with the privacy policies and other disclaimers, making it attractive. Um, so it's not too like in your face can be quite useful and making it easy to accept or deny or find out the relevant information. Um, that's definitely one. If you're unsure of what you need, check out your local, um, deep, like either the region or country you're in authority laws, privacy policy, DPA, GDPR, because they do change um, and they are slightly different country to country. So um, if in doubt, have a look around, but make it attractive and easy to use. Absolutely. I mean, it, they very rarely need to be as big and in your face as a lot of websites have them. Uh, they can be um, quite small and you just, you know, tidy away some of that information into another area of people to inquire with. Just make sure you, again, you, as, as Joe said, you're following the legal requirements where you are or as well, really importantly, where your audience is. So if you have a website that's hosted in UK, you run in UK and you serve the EU or the US, you've got to run to the US's rules as well. Um, cool. Uh, totally. Um, you said, in the, I, oh, I said in one of my past reviews that uh, you can't build a successful website on Squarespace. Squarespace. Why not? Okay. A couple of the reasons uh, you're building on somebody else's platform, like you're on rented space. So there's only like kind of limitations of what you can do. And there's also some performance issues there as well. So, you know, you've got the problem of not being able to tweak things as much as you would like, and then not building they're not trying to build the fastest website ever. They're just trying to build something that's easier for people to use and just get any old website online. They're not trying to be the top performer. They don't want, they're not giving you the opportunity to build the number one website in your industry. They just want you to have a website in your industry. So, you know, with WordPress, which we are incredibly, um, good uh, building sites with like, you know, the, um, our entire history, we've done a lot of like WordPress builds and now we're like becoming Shopify experts as well. Um, yeah, there's just so much cus customability that you can do, like so many changes and tweaks that you can just make it bespoke to you. Whereas with something like Squarespace, you really are limited to what they allow you to do. It kind of is the way with Shopify um, or has been previously, but Shopify are making so many changes where you can add so much more customization, especially when you go into like Shopify Pro, the, the more options are available to you as well. Um, yeah, whereas with Squarespace, it's not, not the case. Scalability, I've found very few Squarespace sites that have scaled with their clients um, or whoever's built them. With Shopify, it has a specific purpose or big commerce. It is an e-com specialist and it gets people online e-com quickly. Um, and with 2.0, they've had to build in like the avail the um, extras that WordPress and WooCom had and made it more functionally easy. 
Um, whereas doing that with Squarespace or some of the other platforms is really, really tricky. And it's it's about what the site needs to do, I think, for you moving forward. Um, and it comes back to what me and Dale said about build once, build right. Like, if you're going to end up spending a lot of money and you can't get a developer to maintain it for you, um, which we've seen a few times, oh, then, yes. yeah. you know, it, is it worth it or invest in something that's tried and tested for big companies as well is probably something i would suggest as well yeah it's like if i was buying headphones or earphones i wouldn't go with like sony because sony okay they can do good stuff but they're trying to be they're trying to cover every kind of electronic possible like you'd rather go with somebody who only makes headphones or earphones because that's their speciality it's the same with with wordpress and shopify they're specifically trying to build high quality websites or e-commerce platforms whereas squarespace is just trying to let you get any old website online um yeah so that, that's the thing to keep in mind when you know choosing between squarespace and wix and then everybody else or wordpress is there more of an investment there? Yes. Do you get a better quality website that's got a higher ranking potential? Absolutely, yeah. So WordPress and Shopify are uh, where I would push um, most people to go. And then uh, the last question, again, if you've got a question, now's the time to ask it with the hashtag ask and you win a copy of this book. If you don't want the book, then you can just hit like down below instead. Um, is checklist applied to any niche website, Joe? Uh, you might have a really niche audience or a really niche product or but they will still require the same types of trust signals or the same type of um, ease of use, it, whether that product's super, super um, niche and has a really small audience. And we've worked on some incredibly small niche audiences yeah. or audiences with super big average order values that are huge, but very, very specific technical knowledge. And I'm thinking in... Um, We've had some in compliance sectors, cybersecurity, things like that. And they've been really technical, but they still needed to follow the same principles and be based in the same um, realm of decision making that it's um, evidence led and also led by who your audience is and consumer. One thing is often hard, I think, with niche sites is sometimes the gatekeeper is different to the person who's using the site. And that messaging is where the CTA needs to be really cleverly thought out because they may not be in the position to actually buy the product, but they're in position to recommend the product. So sometimes making sure that you're factoring that in is what I would say with something of niche. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah, absolutely agree there. Um, yeah, just don't forget that you're speaking to people, uh, whether it's the the shareholder or not somebody is having to think about it and then make a decision so make that information as accessible as possible like i know one business where the majority of their clients don't come from the decision maker the person who signs the contract the first person on the website is the person looking to solve the problem that they're having so you know they they have a, an engineering problem they look for the the solution it comes up with this website oh they sell software oh boss you should see the software it will make my job a, a lot easier can we have a look at this and then that person gets brought in so yeah um does the checklist apply? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Tony said, thanks very much. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, I'm going to do the draw now. So let's just uh, bring it. It's only four people. Um, here we go. Uh, four people who have uh, used the hashtag ask. I'll give you 30 seconds to just uh, drop that in. You don't even have to ask a question at this point. Just use hashtag ask and drop it into the uh, chat. Uh, and yeah, you've got 15 seconds in which to do that. And then we'll call it quits. Joe, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, how can they do so? My email's there. I'm always open for a chat. Always happy to have a look at websites both from a kind of technical point of view whether it needs to be maintained in site maintenance whether it's conversion rate optimization work or whether it's you know full website rebuilds please don't hesitate to get in touch and you know i request it to friends businesses as well because it is genuinely that great the request of website review if you're unsure please do it it'll give you some great great information um, and it's completely free so yeah, definitely yeah look at one of those two options and i look forward to catching up with you soon hopefully i'll be on another session very soon awesome cool i'm gonna hit um ask uh, i'm gonna hit ask i'm gonna hit draw now so good luck to you uh, if you win this make sure to email me at dale at uh, explosioninja.com uh harry i think you oh you did just about get in there in time super um 
yeah, if you do win, uh, so uh, Hardik, uh, cool, fantastic. You can just email me at dale at exposureninja.com. Um, and where where am I? Here I am. Cool. Uh, yeah, uh, email me at daleexposureninja.com and um, just give me the postal address you want it sending to. And if we can't, if you prefer, we can. I can just send you a PDF if it's a lot faster, or I can send you an audio book if you prefer via Audible. It's completely up to you. Uh, otherwise. Um, yeah, if you haven't, if you have a website already and you want us to take a look at it, go to exposureninja.com forward slash uh, review and we'll uh, send you a video outlining exactly what we'd like to do to improve your website's ranking traffic, um, lead sales and everything like that. Otherwise, you can go to a website and go to the website development services page, uh, which I've just linked in the chat and you can uh, request um, a consultation. We'll talk, talk you through how we build a website for your specific needs so that's exposureninja.com look in the services and you'll see website de development and if you're lucky you might be able to speak to joe directly otherwise you can email joe via his email address just there um fantastic great uh joe thanks again for coming on to the, uh another stream i think this is what third in the last month second or third I i'm losing count we'll make it third soon oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the best way friday so any yeah absolutely couldn't lucky. agree more Thank you so much for your time and hope everyone has an amazing weekend. Absolutely. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone. And uh, I'll see you next Friday. Take care. Bye. Bye.